Welcome to Conscious Conversations, a place where East meets West, a place where conversations and ideas will challenge your minds, expand your consciousness, awaken your heart, and make you think more deeply about yourself and the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Anthony Profeta, and of course, I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Wes Gordon. How are you doing today? Awesome. Good. Good to be here with you again. You too. I look forward to these conversations that we get to have with each other and those that are watching and listening. Today, I actually wanted to talk about this whole word conscious that we have in front of our conversations in the title, because that word, what does it mean to be conscious? What does it mean? The definition, there are many words to define it, but one of them is awake. So I thought that maybe today we could share some of the tools that we find helpful for becoming more conscious in our lives, becoming more awake in our lives, and connecting, as we have been referring to, to in the past few episodes, this true essence, this true nature that we find or can find within us. Now, I might be a little bit biased in <laughs> my modality or technique that I find most useful to becoming awake and conscious in this world, and that is meditation and mindfulness practices. But I do believe from my perspective and my point of view that to become awake and conscious, meditation falls upon three pillars. That of presence, and, and by presence, I don't mean like gifts, I don't mean like Christmas presents or birthday presents, I mean right. being fully present to the world and to the moment. So presence, silence, and stillness. The great uh, psychotherapist Carl Jung once said that the person who looks outside dreams, but the person who looks inside awakens. And that's why I believe that meditation and mindfulness practices is so important because they're practices which turn our senses inwards, help to still quiet the mind, make us present to this moment, and allow us the possibility to awaken to the truth of reality and the truth of who and what we are. How about yourself, Wes? Absolutely. Uh, like for me, it was prayer. Right. Then I stepped into meditation. Okay. I wasn't quite sure how that worked because I'd always been taught you should pray. Then I started learning about prayer and how that it wasn't completely effective the way I was doing it. It's a deeper subject. But I went into that silence, okay. which isn't the silence. <laughs> That's what fools so many people. They think when you're sitting there just being quiet and listening that you're actually doing nothing. And that's so far from the truth. Absolutely. There's actually, for me, there's actually an inner channel that's playing all the time that's what we would call divine or divinity or it's the universal intelligence. Right. And if you can turn off your noise long enough, being still, mindful, and in the silence, you can hear and have that influence and affect you to bring out your true essence of who you actually are. And most people overlook that because, oh, I'm not going to sit in the silence. There's nothing there. <laughs> That's not true at all. No, absolutely. Um, silence is, if you enter into it, you discover that it's not very silent. It speaks very loudly, and there's much innate wisdom within there. Uh, Ram Das once said that the quieter you become, the more you can actually hear. Yes. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. They think silent means like the absence of sound, but what you discover as you do become silent and still is that there, it's not that absent. It's not like this empty void. There is an innate wisdom in there. Uh, I, I always sort of quote the Sufi mystic Rumi because I'm very fond of his words, but he has said that silence is the language of God and use whatever label you want on that. You know, we've mentioned before, universe, consciousness, awareness, but we use, or I use the word God. But he says, silence is the language of God. Everything else is a poor translation. Absolutely. And so when you get into that silence, you really sort of, as you're saying, tune yourself in or connect to that uh, wisdom and that voice that is constantly talking all the time. You know, it's like we're, we're on a radio station right now, a radio show, and it's going out on a particular frequency. 
But if we're outside, there's multiple frequencies of information that are being um, bombarded throughout the atmosphere, throughout the air. Now, we can't hear it, right. you know, because we're not tuned in. Exactly. But through, I believe, meditation is a way to tune our dial into specific frequencies. And if we can get present, still, and quiet enough, we can actually tune in to that frequency that many people label and call the God frequency or the voice of God or, you know, um, the innate wisdom or the true self. And so it's just a... Uh, ways that are resonate with us to fine tune our sort of radio antenna within us to connect to that in order to hear more and to be more awake and more conscious of what reality really is. Exactly. Tuning into the God channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what you're doing. But yeah. 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 And, and there's power there. Absolute power there. And even though we've been talking you know, from like spiritual traditions, science has said the same thing, or scientific minds, very genius minds, have said the exact same thing. Albert Einstein, he said that solitude and silence stimulate the creative mind. And there's another mathematician and physicist whose name is uh, Blaise Pascal, and he said that all, <clears throat> excuse me, all men's miseries, and all people's miseries, it should be, uh, arise from not being able to sit quiet in a room alone. And if more people could do that, sit quiet in the room alone, they'd come to understand that there is great wisdom within them, there's great knowledge within them, and all that they seek is already there, right where they are. You don't need to run off anywhere else to find it. Just get quiet, still, and present. Yeah, and it's very sacred energy, and it's very personal. And the issue that I ran into was that other voice, the one that never shuts up, that crazy <laughs> egomaniac that keeps worrying about the world and everything that didn't happen or should happen, that other part of you, that psychological part of you. How do you turn that channel down or get it really quiet if you can? Right. And I'm do a book plug here for Michael Singer. Okay. Because I read The Untethered Soul. Oh, great book. That only about good. 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took that many for it to start to sink in because it was so confusing to my ego. How my ego could be tricking me so badly right. into all this confusion and dilemma and worry. And that's where the meditation in that book was essential in pulling me into what you call the silence. Absolutely. And things started changing then. Yeah. It was, it's beautiful. I mean... It's it's a normal habit now. Right. And, <laughs> and what I find is that, like, even though we're talking about stillness and silence, you can't really grasp it or understand it until you try to enter into it and experience it yourself. Because yes. we have these concepts and these preconceived notions of what we think silence and stillness should be like. But yeah. we find it's very different than maybe those preconceived notions that we do have. Do you find a difference between silence and stillness? Uh, that's a hard for me to find because I didn't realize how much I was struggling to be quiet and still. Okay. Yes. You know, and once that became apparent, I started realizing that when we meditate or I meditate, it's really a, a surrender and relaxation. Right. You're still f perceiving everything. Some people get, at least I got the, uh, I got the thought that I was supposed to fight and keep every thought out of my head. Yeah, that's a and that's big a fallacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk about that a little bit because you know all about this meditation. Well, well sure. Um, a lot of people think that within meditation you need to struggle with the mind, you need to battle with the mind. They're told you have to have no thoughts, but telling the mind to have no thoughts is like trying to tell your heart stop beating. It's just really not going to happen. But what happens with meditation? is one, we begin to build up our concentration and focus. It, there are thousands of methods of meditation, but typically they fall onto trying to bring all your awareness and attention to an object. And whenever the mind wanders away and has thoughts and thoughts arise and distractions arise, we gently come back to that object. So we're continually returning to it over and over again. And when you do that, what does begin to happen is you build up your mind's ability to become what they often refer to in meditation traditions as a single pointed mind, a mind that can stay with the object for really as long as you want it to be there. And that's a very powerful ability to be able to have a mind that's so focused and concentrated. 
And it's through the building up of the concentration and focus that the thoughts begin to lessen. They will still arise, but we're right. not as pulled off by them at times. We can watch exactly. them pass through our mind like clouds through the sky. And the one little metaphor that I'll share in terms of Eastern traditions when it comes to stillness and how meditation and spiritual practice can help you to cultivate stillness is prior to entering into these practices, our mind is very chaotic. It has many thoughts and we're jumping all over the place, thinking about thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future. And you can think of your mind as being a body of water, like a pond or a lake. And all the thoughts that we're having is like wind over that pond or over that lake. So it's making the water very rough. So yes. we can't see into the water yep. and it's very murky and muddy. And so what happens with meditation is the wind, the more you do it, the wind begins to lessen and subside to the point that now the body of water, which is we're metaphoring your mind, becomes like a sheet of glass. And then the water becomes still, the murkiness settles, the sediment drops down to the bottom. And now you can, through the stillness, see into the depths of that pond, that water, that lake. And that means you're able to see more into the depths of reality and more into the depth of yourself to discover who and what you truly are and truly come to know thyself. Exactly. But now I think we need to pause here for a break. We'll be back after these few words and messages, and we'll be continuing this talk on silence, stillness, and get more into what really presence is. So stay with us, and we'll be back right after these messages. Ten, nine, eight. Why did the countdown stop? Because it's the countdown to Buzz TV channel 1098, Comcast Xfinity, and it's here. Local content for Sebastian Vero and Fort Pierce. Tune in for local info, happenings, and fun, including all the great Planet Vero TV shows from 8 to 10 a.m. and p.m. Dial in channel 1098 for Buzz TV on your Comcast Xfinity box and discover what the buzz is all about. Waves Auto Spa, known as Vero's fastest and finest. A car wash known for their quality equipment and attention to detail by a friendly and courteous staff. Waves offers soft cloth technology and a top-notch detail center will help preserve the value of your car. Waves now offers windshield chip repair, and in most cases, it doesn't cost you a dime. Spend less time and get a better quality experience for you and your car at Waves Auto Spa, US 1 Vero Beach, across from Kmart Plaza. Open seven days a week. This is Arturo Alici, chef owner of American Grill. We only use fresh Florida beef. I love the burgers you have at American Grill, Arturo, but I also love the salads, the pizzas. My dad loves the penny pasta. And one of the things about your burgers is you have camel burger and, and boar burger and elk burger. I am exotic. I love exotic stuff. We have seven nights civic entertainment, many, many more coming. Great food, crazy chef. American Grill in the South Vero Plaza on US 1 at Oslo. Hi, hi, Leah Waldos. And although you're used to me talking about Waldos, this time it's about the Driftwood Resort. Many have had to cancel vacation plans this summer, but the Driftwood Resort is coming to the rescue. From now through October 31st, the Driftwood is offering a studio unit deal. Stay two nights and get your third night free. When booking, mention the Driftwood loves the locals. As always, upon availability, Driftwood Resort and Waldos, where we have your staycation covered. 772-231-0550. This year, let the professionals at Premier Landscape Solutions enhance your property's curb appeal. Our expert design team can help turn your tired landscaping into the perfect backyard and create a customized care plan that will keep your property looking great year-round. 772-925-0030. Visit our website at VeroBeachLandscaping.com. From bare bones to beautiful, let us transform your space today. We don't make excuses, we make results. Premier Landscape Solutions. Hi. And welcome back to Conscious Conversations. I'm Anthony Profeta, and I'm here with my good friend Wes Gordon. We're having a conversation about what it really is to be conscious and how one definition of that is being awake or aware. And we're talking about ways to cultivate more consciousness and awareness and awakeness in our lives. And we were t talking about meditation and a little bit of how, it, to me, and my perspective, it falls on three pillars of being present, still, and silent. And we've spoken a little bit about silence and stillness. 
So why don't we take a little bit of time now to really focus on presence. And again, we're not talking about gifts, although the present moment, which is what we're referring to, is probably the greatest gift. But what is, how do you try to be more present and what does presence mean to you in your practice? It's, it's connecting to that inner voice, that inner channel that we were talking about for me. That's what started to unravel when I did do the, med- started meditating. Things about you that are blocking you from this divine connection, right. past traumas in your childhood or present day things that are happening to you, yes. they start coming up from deep within you and you see them in a totally different light. Right. It's like this divinity, this divine energy is helping you translate how that actually worked versus how you thought it worked and created a really crappy opinion usually about it. Right. And you're holding on <laughs> the to stories it. we tell ourselves. Yes. And that gives you a way to work through that and let it go. Right. Whereas you couldn't let it go before you've been holding it for years and it's been blocking that energy, that more life flowing through you. And that's what I started to experience when I kept doing this because this is, this is a mature spiritual path. Right. You got to be serious about this and you can play around with it, but you won't get far with it and you'll be kind of bored with it actually. Yeah. And unless it needs it's coming to be, from the heart. And it, no, great point. And it also needs to be, as you're saying, consistent too, because yes. if you just dabble in it, if you just tip your toe in these practices that we're told to turn within ourselves, get quiet, quit still mindfulness and meditation, if it's not as consistent as brushing your teeth and taking a shower, it's really never going to unfold for you as it should. Yeah. And there's a power that comes with this that I didn't realize at first because of that focus that you're talking about, that it starts to become developed. Yes. Troubles and issues come at you in life and you stop being reactive. You start being responsive, responsible. Yeah. You actually have that ability to pause and listen and see it for what it is instead of just bursting into flames and reacting. <laughs> and yeah. that's that's powerful, very powerful. Absolutely. We don't realize uh, how mindlessly we move through life and how programs and habitual patterns are really directing our everyday day-to-day living. And so presence, for me, is really connecting as fully as we can to the moment, being 100% attentive and with whatever activity or thing we're doing and trying to redirect the mind to this moment and whatever activity we're doing within it, uh, rather than letting it go wherever it wants to go. Because what we notice when we begin to observe and try to watch our mind is that the body's present wherever we are, but the mind typically is hanging out like 99.9% of the time in one of two places. It's either hanging out in the past or it's going and projecting and worrying about and fantasizing about the future. And when we're doing that, when we're mentally not here, not present to the moment and dwelling in past or future, we're actually missing all that life is bringing to us, all that life is presenting to us. And so if we're missing life, how can we be sure if we're making the right choices or responding in the right way to what's coming to us? Absolutely. Back to that God is statement. Yeah. God is, that is right this moment. Yes. That's when everything's actually happening. And I used to really fight with that because everybody was doing the now, living the now. What right. time is it now? <laughs> now. <laughs> they got now clocks. Yeah. I get real angry. At My this. friend has a watch that yes. every uh, number is just says now. Yeah, on. <laughs> the now, 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 now. Exactly. And every time I get really frustrated, I had a friend, they pull me back and say, what time is it? now and they say are you breathing are you okay is everything fine do you have food <laughs> right now because they they were trying to pull me out of dwelling on the past which d- is gone it never happens again the right. future is still to be determined right this moment when i'm breathing and thinking and focus that's what's real that's absolutely the only thing that's ever real and it's just a series of bleep bleep bleep, bleep moments yep. now moments right that's a hard concept for the ego the- it wants to control everything, needs to think about everything, and yeah. it dwells on regret what is upset about that happened in a now moment that's now in memory and, you know, worrying and stressing about what's going to be coming in the future. Yes. And so uh, when we talk about presence, what we really gain is great strength because the present moment is all that we have. Some people will say to me, though, in, re- in response to that, well, no, no, the present moment is infinitely small. It's always passing. But... 
I come back with the thing that you said sort of irritates you is that I say, no, it's always now. You know, really, what time is it? It's now again. That's all there is. All we truly have is an unending and eternal present moment experience. But while the body's here, mentally we're not. And those of you that know me or tuned into the first show, you know that I did reference that my background was actually medicine. And so I just want to share with you what this really means of not being present and not being in the moment. Because the past is gone. It's no longer here. All that's the past is, is now when we go back and dwell in the past, we're living in a non-reality, in an yeah. illusionary time yes. that's now known as memory. And so it's not real because it's gone. It's not happening in this moment. It's living in a mental reality that is a non-reality known as memory. Now, in the flip side of that coin, when the mind goes and projects into the future, it's also living in a non-reality because the future hasn't come yet. Yep. It's living in what is known as an illusionary time of fantasy or imagination. So now, from a medical perspective, <laughs> yeah. what this truly means is if we're not living in reality, if we're living in illusionary, non-real times, then I'm sorry to say to everyone listening and watching that that shows us that we're all actually insane people. Because the textbook definition of in, yeah, the textbook <laughs> definition of insanity is someone who's not living in reality. <laughs> but if the present moment is reality and yeah. we're not there, then by default we can be labeled as living an insane life. So what I like to say is that meditation, mindfulness practices, or anything you do that brings you back to the present moment, fully engaged in the activity you're doing and fully present actually helps you to regain your mental health and makes you a more sane individual. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, presence is um, something that does take time to be cultivated. It's not something we know off the bat because really for the majority of our lives, our mind has had the free reign to go wherever it wants to go, think whatever it wants to think, think any thought it wants to think at any moment in time. And so what we do through meditation practices or any practice where we're focusing all our awareness and attention on the activity and then just gently returning back to that activity or that object that we're focusing upon is learning how to cultivate presence. Yes. And it's sort of like taking your mind or your uh, awareness to the gym. You know, you do a couple of reps with a dumbbell to build up your muscles, your physical muscles, while returning back to the object over and over and over again is building up your attention muscle, your muscle of presence, your muscle of awareness. Absolutely. And there's so many benefits to that. I mean, just, just, yeah, I can't even say all of them. They're just so life giving. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, well, we're fully engaged in the f only moment we're fully alive in. Yep. You know, otherwise we're, we're existing, but we're not living. If we're not present, we're not living because we're missing life. Yes. We're missing the moment of life. We're just existing in life without being fully engaged in it. And mm -hmm. the uh, thing that I loved also is that you said, we learn how to respond, not react to what life is presenting to us. Because when yes. we become present to the moment, there is a slight pause, a slight gap between what life presents and then our ability to choose, okay, how am I gonna respond to this? And meditation, mindfulness practices help us to respond really more wisely. And in that moment is the only moment that God is. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I think uh, we're gonna have to end right there, but if, you really want to awaken, if you really want to become more conscious to the deeper understanding of reality of yourself, then you need to be here now. You need to be fully present in this moment, get silent and seek and listen to that still small voice within. And I'll just leave you with these words from the poet Emerson, who said, let us be silent so that we can hear the whisper of the gods. Yes. So we look forward to talking to you next time. You can catch these live broadcasts every Wednesday. Uh, you can catch us on um, Buzz TV every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. here in uh, Indian River County on Xfinity Comcast Channel 1098. And you can catch us on um, the radio on 101.7 every Sunday at 2.30. Thank you all. We love you all. We appreciate you, all of you that are listening, watching. Yes, you much. can connect to us and leave any of your questions and continue these conversations at Conscious Conversations Facebook group. And we look forward to connecting with you there. Have a blessed and beautiful day.